the books Palma has been having a bit of a moment recently. The Verge's David Pierce actually posted an article about how indispensable it's been for him, and quite unexpectedly so. The phone suddenly took off on socials, hashtags flying around everywhere, you name it. And then more recently, Marquez Brownlee posted his discovery of the books Palma. It's definitely making the rounds. Now, I've actually had the books Palma here for six months, and I gotta say, it's a pretty stellar e-reader device. It's not always the perfect reading device, though. For example, if you have a PDF scan of a book, you might have a hard time reading that text without converting it to ebook format uh, along the way, whereas like a larger format e-ink display could give a bit more flexibility there. But for a low profile e-reader that's actually shaped <laughs> really like a smartphone, it's as good as you could expect. And as David points out in his piece, it's also a really great way to trim down your smartphone usage because it's not a smartphone, even though it kind of looks like one. It can do most smartphone-y things other than making actual phone calls. You've got the Play Store, you know, it can do all these things, but because of the display being what it is, some of those limitations actually tamper down on your desire to use it in the same way that you would use a smartphone. Design-wise, it's plasticky, yes, but it doesn't feel insanely cheap. It's got a little bit of a texture that you can't really pick up quite so well uh, in this shot. The e-ink is sharp. It's also bright when you really want it to be. And to my surprise, there are a good deal of useful settings for the system that really improve the usage of this device. And that's actually what I'm gonna show you a few of those tips right now. The first tip that I'm gonna show off is system brightness quick access. Now, you do have access to adjusting the brightness on the book's Palma through the pull down at the top, kind of your quick access, this front light area, I can actually have you know my brightness set to automatic, which is what it's on right now, or I can use this slider to adjust the brightness and the darkness. But if you want it to be a little bit easier, so let's go ahead and go into our multitasking and jump into this book that I've been reading. If I wanted to make this brighter, and not have to pull down the settings here, I can go into, and set this up, go into my settings, down at the bottom of settings is system navigation, and then down here is side gestures. And if I tap over on this right side, this right border essentially, I have assigned it to brightness. Now you can assign it to other things if you like, but I find brightness there is really handy. Now if I go back to my book and I'm reading, I can use that side to increase the display brightness or make it darker. And I can do this on the fly depending on where I'm at. It's just nice because it comes in handy with your single hand usage. You can kind of use that and make the adjustments uh, on the fly. Now, another thing about this settings feature is that it allows you to make the adjustment on the other side. It can actually turn uh, the left side of the screen into something. Right now I have it set to volume. The book's Palma, one of the really appealing things about it is that it's highly customizable, not just the function button, but you can also go even deeper. You can set a double click function for that function button. You can set a long press function. So that's three different actions that can take place on that button. And that's not even the end of it. If we go back out here, go into the volume buttons, then we can change the volume button and what it does on the device. Cause maybe you have no real need for changing the volume on your book's Palma. Uh, maybe you want it more, you know, specific to an app. So if you go into this short press function section, now on a per app basis, I can assign what I want that volume rocker to do. So for example, Libby, which is my go-to app for checking out eBooks from the local library, I can set that to page turn. And then when I'm in Libby, it's actually really easy, right? I'm, I'm reading my book in Libby. And once it's open, if I'm in a one-handed method, which is often what I am when I'm reading a book, I can just hit the volume button and it immediately skips through, which just kind of saves me from having to deal with the refresh lag that is the case on the book's Palma sometimes. I can just hit the button, scan right through, and get right to where I need to go. Now, you know, this is for other apps as well. So if I go into my multitasking 
and jump back into the settings, you know, I can set Firefox to be uh, scrolling. That actually makes sense. It's a browser. So when I'm browsing the web, I want those volume buttons to scroll. And then yes, of course, like YouTube, it makes sense for that to be set to volume. On a per app basis, I can determine what I want that volume rocker to be tons of flexibility. Now I mentioned refresh a few moments ago, so let's talk a little bit about it. E-Ink is going to ghost over time if you don't do a full refresh that essentially resets the screen to eliminate any memory that's baked in. But a full refresh does take longer to execute, so it's really a trade-off, quality versus speed. If you wanna control ghosting, you have a few ways that you can actually do this on the books Palma. So the first method is on a per app basis. So we'll go ahead and go into settings and then apps and notifications and then app refresh mode. All right, and there, cause you know, different apps are gonna have different ideal refresh rates with this display. When you read a book, Refresh speed isn't a priority, but quality is. When I'm in my Kindle app, I probably want this set to HD mode in that case. When you watch a video on YouTube, refresh is very important, but your quality is gonna suffer. And so on YouTube, I would have this set for ultra fast. It's gonna refresh faster, the quality is gonna diminish. When I'm surfing the web, say with Firefox, you kinda want a happy medium, right? You could probably set this to either balanced, or fast mode, either of those is probably gonna do good for you. Really, it's just up to you. You can set each app as you wish based on how you use them. Now, the second method is full refresh frequency. So if we go into settings and then display and then full refresh frequency, this will automatically refresh the display at a certain interval of screen taps. So essentially you wanna set this at a nice happy medium point. If you're gonna refresh with every tap, everything's gonna take a lot longer. You're always gonna get these kind of flashing moments between every tap and things just take a little bit longer to load. If I set this to every 10 taps, then I get a little bit faster of a response I mean, response is never <laughs> really insanely fast on the Books Palma, but it does save that refresh for every 10 taps and that you know kind of speeds things up a little bit, still gives you the full refresh that gets rid of any ghosting that builds up over time, uh, but it's not doing it all the time to kind of slow you down. So again, here, it's all about finding the balance that works for you. And finally, getting back to the function button that I talked about a few moments ago, if we go into settings, more settings, settings, and then function button, you can see that my short press function on the left side is set to full refresh. That way, if any ghosting builds up on the screen and I just want to take care of it immediately, I can single tap that function button and it will automatically do a full screen refresh on demand. Very nice to have that handy right there with the tap of a finger. Now let's talk a little bit about gesture control. With gesture control on, you have three different zones from the bottom that do different things within the system. We'll go into settings, system navigation, gestures, and then gestures. We've got little settings button there for gestures. And this allows me to determine what these three separate zones here do. I'm sure you, you know, you've maybe noticed that when I'm on the left-hand side and I swipe up, I get the Android multitasking view, which I tend to use a lot. It's a nice way to kind of quickly skip in between apps, just on the left-hand side, swipe up. We'll go back to the settings where we were. And then you've got the middle area. This is what's gonna take you out to the home screen. We're now at the home screen. I'm gonna do my multitasking to get back to where we were. And then on the right hand side, the e-ink center. And this area, if we go there, gives you some quick settings to adjust how the e-ink is, is operating, how it's responding to you know, what you're using and what you're looking at on your device at any given time. But all of this is easily customizable. You can just hit custom on any one of those and you've got a whole host of settings that are predetermined, but you can determine what all three of those actually do and you can set them however you want. If you wanted to go simple, 
you could actually set them all to the same thing. Let's say go to home screen and then anywhere on the bottom that you swipe up is going to take you to home screen. That's what's going to really mimic like a standard Android gesture approach. So you have that option too. And finally, you can throw some files on this. It's really easy to do. Books has included a books drop app that you can see right there on the home screen. And with it, you can easily connect from your computer or another phone to the Palma to transfer media to the device through the same Wi-Fi network that both devices are connected to. Now, when I was in Italy, I came across an out of print book in PDF format called Outrageous Conduct, a very fascinating book, I might add. It's too bad it's not in print anymore. And I downloaded it to my phone. And then transferring it to the books was actually very, very simple. If you want to transfer that file to the Books Palma, you just open the Books Drop app on the Books Palma, gives you that QR code. And as long as my phone is connected to the same wireless access point as the Books Palma, then I'm good to go. I'm going to go ahead and scan the QR code with the OnePlus 12. It gives me that URL to connect to. And now what I'm doing is I'm selecting the folder into which on the Books Palma I want to transfer a file. So let's say this is the folder that I want to tr transfer into. Send to Books and then Media Picker. And then this brings up a picker of the files on my actual phone. So it would be this file. Go ahead and send it. It's transferring over and that's all it takes. It's moved the file onto the Books Palma. From there, I can go into the folder and yes, I've downloaded it a couple of times. That's why there's three of them here, but this is where it is. And from there, I have access to it with the Books Neo Reader and uh, boom. There we go. Outrageous conduct. I have it on my Books Palma and it was very easy to get it over there. So overall, if you want to snag a Books Palma, you can easily find it for sale, $280. And you can actually link to the product in the description below. It is worth noting that this device runs Android 11 out of the box, which is an outdated version of the Android OS and not by a, a small amount. It's nearly four years on at this point. That's a really big sticking point, especially for people who are very security and privacy conscious. Now, don't expect this to get any major Android OS updates. Honestly, that's my own personal opinion. And if it does, consider yourself lucky. Does that mean that you shouldn't get the Books Palma? No, just be aware, be careful. And if you know what you're getting yourself into, you should be okay. What do you think about the Books Palma? And more specifically, what does it do that you've been missing with other e-readers? Drop me a comment down below. Let me know. I promise to respond. Also, be sure to check out my comprehensive unboxing of the Books Palma from just a few months back so you know what to expect when you receive your own. And thank you so much for watching my take on the Books Palma. We'll see you next time.